tied to the stock market into an IRA backed by physical precious metals. And to celebrate their first 100 days on Coast to Coast, it's remarkable, through September 30th, on qualifying orders of gold or silver, they will give you a free safe to store it all in. So get your free info kit on precious metals and learn more about this special offer by texting the word COAST to 989898. And with thousands of satisfied customers, a plus rating with a better business bureau and countless five-star reviews. Bruce Gold can help you protect your savings. Simply text COAST to 989898. Again, remember this, COAST to 989898. Hey, this looks cool. Workout, funny, work done. Free trial. Huh, I'll click here. No, oh, age. What's this? Give us your phone number for daily motivational messages. Sure. No one really tries to be unsafe online. My birthday's for a matching playlist. That's fun. Every time you give up info and privacy, you may give up a little safety, too. My mother's made a name for a water bottle? Sweet! Norton 360 with LifeLock helps keep your digital life safer. With device security, the VPN to keep your Wi-Fi activity private, and identity theft protection. All in one. No one can prevent all cyber crime or identity theft, but everyone can opt in to cyber safety. A visit from Mr. Fitness himself? Or an arm and a leg? Well, that'll take the weight off. Save 25% or more off your first year of Norton 360 with LifeLock at Norton.com slash join. That's 25% off at Norton.com slash join. Welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you along with Cheryl Jones with part two of their interview with Susie Ward. And Susie's been doing this for some time now, hasn't she, Cheryl? She sure has. It took 14 years after the medium first told her that she would be hearing from him and there would be a special significant message. And of course, you can see what has happened from that. So she continues now. She's not writing any more books. She did write a sixth book, which was about animal. She is a, an animal rescuer and oh, takes animals cool. to visit uh, nursing homes and so on. And uh, her sixth book is amazing too. It's a, a profound uh, and amazing conversation book with animals with Susie. So that's a whole other world. But she says that is one that she did. She says the others are through Matthew. And Matthew, of course, uh, is her son who passed away in 1980. Go ahead, Cheryl. 1980 at the age of 17, and George, you've heard of a mother's intuition. We all have. It's a connection between a mother and a child and understanding centuries old. My guest, Susie Ward, knows about that. She's lived for 40 years now after the death of Matthew and understands a mother's intuition that knows no bounds. In my first segment with her, we learned how her son died in a fatal auto accident at age 17 and crossed to the other side. He waited until his mother was ready to hear his unmistakable message, she says, that was meant just for her. And in this segment, she shares information with me that should give us all hope and inspiration, too. So he continues to channel messages from Matthew through his telepathic connection with her on a regular basis. And make no mistake, he emphatically states to Susie, that we are not alone that the other side knows what is happening with us here on Earth at this time, the chaos, the fear, the manipulation, and that the other side also has others who work with him diligently and compassionately to save mankind, and she will share some of that with us. Listen in now on my interview with Susie about what Matthew has to say. Susie, what is Matthew's main message that he wants you to emphasize to the people of the Earth? He's telling me love is the key to the best life for you and the best world possible. So I've already mentioned love, that energy, and how it is expressed differently from light. But as God said, absorbing light 
is as simple as be kind. The world is in havoc. There's no way to paint a rosy picture about that. There is tremendous political polarity in practically all countries. There is still fighting going on and greed and corruption. And Matthew is offering some suggestions about how each of us can contribute light um, words, whether they're read, spoken, or words in our thoughts, emit vibrations. And the words like love and blessings, kindness, goodness, honesty, gratitude, the qualities that we admire in people, those have very high vibrations and they send out light into the world because everything is energy. That energy we are putting out with the words we choose and feelings of fear and angst and grave concern have very low vibrations. Consequently, the secret society that Matthew refers to usually as the Illuminati, but is more commonly known, I think, as Deep State or One World Order or the Cabal, they are aware of these laws of the universe that have to do with energy and vibrations and frequencies. And they control mainstream media and also censor the articles and videos on the internet so that primarily what we see in newscasts or on the internet are what the dark hearts and minds want us to see. They want us to see catastrophes, and calamities, anything that will cause us to be fearful. So do not fall into fear. We are so well protected and guided by what you could call the arms of God, spirit guides and angels, and dear ones to us who are living in spirit. So there is nothing to fear. The expression, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, is true. And it pulls us down, it dims our light, it makes life worrisome and burdensome instead of joyful. Susie, what does Matthew want you to emphasize about heaven and the best proof for people or skeptics that there is an afterlife? There is only one world where everybody goes. There is no heaven or hell. There is no judgment day, except when each of us reviews our past lives and can see where we have hurt others and or others have hurt us or at least that's what we perceived when we were here on earth but it is the dying process it's really not to fear because the fear connected with it is oh what's going to happen to me when i die there's that lightning quick journey to nirvana to use its proper name and we are greeted there and furthermore because religions teach so many different things and people have each of us has his or her own opinion of what the afterlife will be what we are expecting to see 
is created for us by some of the light forces. They holographically reproduce what it is that we are expecting, and that eases the introduction to spirit life. And there are special areas that are the equivalent of our ICUs in hospitals, where we go for healing and somebody is in constant attention. The atmosphere is with gentle breezes and pastel colors and musical tones quietly in the background. And all of those emit healing vibrations. They are all expressions of love vibrations. So there is nothing to fear during the lifetime or after we leave it. It is meant to be lived in health and joy. Tell me about Matthew's position or rank in the afterlife and the other beings and civilizations that he works with. I know you've talked with and received information from other sources besides Matthew as well. I have. Members of civilizations, highly evolved civilizations, have given presentations for the books, including a reptilian fleet commander. Just as there are dark humans, there are dark reptilians, and vice versa. But all of these civilizations whose representatives have given information to me are helping Earth and have been helping for centuries, but particularly during this unique time. They are performing so many acts of goodness on our behalf. They have prevented more than a dozen attempts of nuclear warheads detonating in space, which could have caused such disaster on the planet that it could not recover. They are clearing pollution out of our skies. There are so many toxic elements in our air that we wouldn't even be able to breathe if it were not for the civilizations that are reducing the toxicity in those elements. Entire civilizations are beaming massive amounts of light to Earth to help the people awaken and to raise the vibrations of the planet itself to assist Gaia, Gaia, and most people say, to recover balance. At one time, about 80 years ago, the planet was in such weakened condition, it was at risk of flying out into space and certain destruction. And the massive infusion of light from other civilizations literally saved the life of the planet and is gradually aligning her axis as it should be. So does he emphasize that the good is going to win out in the end over the evil and the light over the dark? Yes. There's no question about it. Matthew and the other souls at his station can see into what we call future and see that life on Earth is peaceable. The environment has been restored. People are cooperative, loving, and enlightened, and living in complete harmony with nature. Where can people contact you and find out more about your books and Matthew messages and the updated information that you post monthly from him? MatthewBooks.com Two T's in Matthew, plural books. 
Also, Matthew Book's YouTube channel has the link in the menu and the podcast. Uh, there are sample chapters of all of the books on that site and bookshop where people can order the books. And you also have a sixth book about your conversations with animals. Oh, I do. I do. It's uh, the only book I have written, and it is really quite an enlightening book. Animals have so far greater comprehension than we do in many, many ways. Their abilities exceed ours in a number of ways, and they are multidimensional, but they know they are. We are, but we don't know it. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Susie, for sharing this inspirational story about Matthew and the five books you've written through him, the Matthew books, your book about animals, and all of Matthew's profound messages. You've chronicled them and referenced them so well. It's been such a joy talking with you. It's been a joy being with you, Cheryl. Thank you for inviting me. What a class lady, huh? Oh, she is. She's amazing. I just can't believe she's an amazing 88 years old and still going so strongly. She spent half of her adult life on this incredible telepathic journey with her son, Matthew, and as you heard, George, it began some 40 years ago when three separate mediums who did not know each other all gave Susie the same information with details on Susie's life that only Susie knew and no one else, so there it began. And she was ready to trust her mother's intuition and listen to what her son wanted to tell her. After interviewing Susie, what did you think of her story? Well, I think it's pretty incredible. I mean, who are we to say um, what someone else from the other side is conveying to, uh, to another person to communicate on to us? So five books later, I don't see how anyone could compile all of the information that she's compiled and, and with all those different topics without some divine intervention. And uh, it's, it's really pretty, pretty uh, amazing. Did she believe what was happening in the beginning when this started? I think she was, she was really pretty amazed. And I think she was, a, uh, from what she says, she was um, wide-eyed, I guess, ready to try to understand, but it was all so new to her. And I think one thing that really helped her a lot, because she was, said she was so overwhelmed, as you can well imagine, she didn't really know how to go about it, uh, and she didn't want to do it. She kept, kept trying to resist it, and then she says that Matthew just insisted, and finally she said, okay, here we go. But she has a background as a journalist. She worked for various publications as an editor and writer and and publications like Army and Air Force, uh, Surgeon General's journals, and American College of Physicians, uh, uh, clinical journals, and so on. So uh, she was really good at organizing, bringing things together, and then creating a final product out of it. So I think uh, she said she told me that uh, that was uh, one reason that Matthew knew that he could he could count on her to convey his information. Well, she did a great job. We're coming back for phone calls with you next on Coast to Coast AM. Yeah. It's okay if you're wondering, is the COVID-19 vaccine safe for people like me? And when you're ready, here's your answer. It was tested by adult volunteers of different ages, races, genders, ethnicities, and health conditions. Tens of thousands of people, a group as diverse as California itself. And thanks to them, we know the vaccine is safe. Let's get you vaccinated. Let's get to immunity. Learn more at vaccinateall58.com or call 833-422-4255. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Should kids and teens get the COVID-19 vaccine? Is it safe for my daughter? 
Have they been thoroughly tested? Will my grandson be okay if he gets vaccinated? He's still developing. The short answer to all these questions? Yes. The COVID-19 vaccine is proven to be safe and effective for ages 12 and up. Add a COVID-19 vaccine to your child's back-to-school checklist. Visit myturn.ca.gov to find a walk-in option or make an appointment. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Thank you for calling Zero Res. Um, do you guys get out of carpet? Yes, sir. We specialize in removing that from carpet. Is there a lot? Yeah, I did it myself with one of those rental machines, but it left everywhere. Now the carpet's stiff. Crunchy. Don't worry, sir. Zero Res can clean that up. At Zero Res, shampoo is a dirty word. Only Zero Res cleans without shampoos and detergents, so your carpets are left soft and fluffy like the day they were installed. Book your cleaning today at ZeroSoCal.com. It's the word mattress stores can't stop shouting every Labor Day holiday. Fail! Fail! Right, Dad. But what good is getting the lowest price on the wrong mattress? So this Labor Day, come to Six Sleep, where our exclusive bed match technology scientifically matches you for just the right mattress. Save 50% off select mattresses. And with your good credit, pay 0% financing for 36 months. So this Labor Day, don't settle for a low price on the wrong mattress. Trust your sleep to sit and sleep. Free-range, non-genetically modified, handcrafted, artisanal, gluten-free, stimulating talk. KFI and KOST HD2, Los Angeles, Orange County. Happy Friday, you made it through the week. for your morning wake-up call. Here's Jennifer Jones Lee. I feel like after that introduction, you don't need me. You are awake. Welcome to Friday. KFI AM 640 Live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Here's what's just ahead on your wake-up call. We're going to get you as much information as we can to follow up Yesterday's attack in Afghanistan, American military officials say they are preparing for other possible missions or attacks as they continue the evacuation mission in Afghanistan. And we'll go live to ABC's Jordana Miller to get an update on the situation in Afghanistan. I want to find out what's going on at the airport regarding the evacuation. She can go back over the number of U.S. service members that we've lost and also what now will the evacuation process be like? Because we keep hearing that there are more evacuations that are being prepped, which is wonderful, but will it be the same way? What kind of danger will the evacuees be put into? Those sorts of questions are what I want to follow up on. Then we'll take a look at this fast-moving fire near Fontana that's destroyed 18 buildings and burned 900 acres. Officials there are warning people, please go along with the evacuation orders. And a church in Sun Valley that repeatedly violated COVID-19 restrictions may get a $400,000 payout from L.A. County. So we'll get to all those stories this morning on your wake-up call. American military officials say they are preparing for other possible attacks as they continue the evacuation mission in Afghanistan. Commander of the U.S. Central Command, Marine Corps General Kenneth McKenzie, says bombings yesterday showed that ISIS-K is very dangerous. Right now, our focus really, we have other active threat streams, extremely active threat streams against the airfield. We want to make sure that we've taken the steps we need to take to protect ourselves there. Thirteen American service members and dozens of Afghan citizens were killed in two bombings at the airport in Kabul. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack. We understand that evacuation flights from Afghanistan have resumed a day after the two bombings, but the U.S. again has warned there could be more attacks. More with Jordana Miller in just a few minutes. A wildfire that burned almost 900 acres near Fontana has fire officials reminding people to get out when evacuation orders are issued. The fire spread through dry brush and destroyed at least 18 buildings. The biggest thing is fires are burning uh, faster than we've seen in the years past uh, through topography and fuels at a rapid rate of spread. San Bernardino County Fire Battalion Chief Mike McClintock says staying behind puts first responders and the public at risk. If we ask you to evacuate home, please do. Let us get in there, protect your home, protect vital infrastructure and property, and not have to worry about the life safety factors. The fire that started Wednesday near the 15 freeway was hit with hundreds of firefighters and air crews as it headed toward Lytle Creek. Corbin Carson, KFI News. The fire is now 10% contained. 
Now, the brush fire that's burned 295 acres in Anza in southwestern Riverside County is now 80% contained. The Riverside County Fire Department says all evacuation orders have been lifted, but fire crews are staying on the scene to strengthen containment lines. The fires destroyed multiple homes and other buildings. An excessive heat warning is in effect for the next few days for parts of the Inland Empire. The National Weather Service says temperatures are expected to get as high as 98 to 105 in places like Riverside, Corona, and Moreno Valley. The heat warning will stay in place until 9 Sunday night. The Supreme Court has ended the federal ban on evictions. The CDC had issued a moratorium to ban evictions until the beginning of October, but ABC's Royal Oak says the agency overstepped its authority. This ruling may light a fire under Congress. The court said that whatever the merits of a national ban on evictions during COVID, such a rule can't be imposed by an agency like the CDC. It can only happen if the House and Senate pass a ban. The moratorium had been challenged by a coalition of landlords and real estate groups. The White House says it's disappointed by the decision and is calling on local officials to put measures in place to prevent pandemic-related evictions. And cases of COVID-19 in L.A. County are dropping slightly. But officials say the transmission of the virus is still widespread. Health Director Barbara Ferrer says the median age of those vaccinated who get the virus and admitted to a hospital is 51. And only a very small portion of those people are put in an ICU and an even smaller portion are intubated. Combined, these findings suggest that vaccination contributes to a less severe course of hospitalization among people who end up infected with COVID. Ferrer says of the 10.3 million people in the county, 64% are fully vaccinated. Steve Gregory, KFI News. When we come back, we'll talk about the situation in Afghanistan with Jordana Miller. We'll update the number of U.S. service members who were killed. And also, I want to go over what the plan is now for continuing the evacuations out of the region. Right now, let's say hello to Nick Pagliocchini. Nick, happy Friday to you. Good morning, Jen. Happy Friday to you as well. And not such a happy Friday to start things out for the drive in the Glendora area. On the westbound side of the 210, it's going to be a bit rough for the ride. Coming off the 57 as you make your way toward, uh, looks like about Citrus, that is a crash that is a carpool and two left lanes shut down. Looks like that's been there for a decent amount of time. So plan for maybe Arrow Highway as a surface street alternate or the uh, 10 westbound so far. Looks pretty good coming out of the Pomo and a Fairflex area. As you make way through the Kellogg Interchange beyond the 57, 10 westbound, pretty decent for you out of the Covinas as you make way through Baltimore park toward the 605. If the 60 would be your choice of an alternate, that actually looks pretty decent as well. Out of Chino through Diamond Bar and Pass on the 57, you'll see delays uh, wide open, actually, no delays. As you make way toward the 605, Catherine's crews on the east side of the 60, though, wrapping up shop from the overnight and early morning hours, so that will be a little slow going for you. 60 eastbound from the 71 as you make way toward Ramona Avenue. KFI and the Sky helps get you there faster. I'm Nick Pagliocchini. 506 on your wake-up call. Jordana Miller, good morning to you. So first off, can you update us on the number of U.S. service members that were lost in yesterday's attack in Afghanistan? Well, 12 uh, U.S. Uh, servicemen and one Navy medic were killed. Uh, that's 13 uh, in total, and 18 uh, were wounded. Uh, this is the uh, most uh, fatal attack on U.S. Uh, soldiers in Afghanistan in, in over a decade, uh, going back to 2011. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, a tragedy in these closing, uh, this closing chapter, these last few days before uh, the evacuation. And just a short while ago, White House senior officials saying the threat is still out there. Uh, in other words, you know, the U.S. Uh, expects perhaps more uh, attempted attacks uh, against U.S. forces and Afghanis in the, in, you know, before the deadline on August 31st. Uh, so still uh, a lot of uh, heightened tension and fear there as well as so much grief uh, from the Afghan, by the Afghani people, over 90 Afghanis killed, and, and like that number is likely to rise. What's being told to the evacuees who are still there, the U.S. citizens who remain? Because yesterday they were told, you know, if you are at some of these gates, get away because we fear that something would happen. But they told the other people who were headed to the airport, just be careful of your surroundings. And that quickly changed, of course, after we had the two bombings. Now what are they being told this morning? Well, the flight evacuations are uh, continuing uh, the White House says that in the last 24 hours, that is from 3 a.m. Eastern on Thursday until 3 a.m. today, 
there were, you know, another 12,500 Americans and Afghani allies uh, evacuated from Afghanistan. Um, you know, there are still people gathering around the Abbey Gate uh, today. Uh, the desperation to get out of Afghanistan seems to be overriding, uh, in many cases, the fear of getting, uh, you know, caught up in, in another attack. Uh, you know, there were many warnings that were put out by the American uh, um, military forces, you know, and the government yesterday, uh, saying specifically around the, the Abbey Gate there were imminent uh, threats that they believed were credible. Um, they haven't put out any more warnings today, um, but clearly uh, the Biden administration is aware that they may face more attempted attacks uh, as this uh, mission wraps up, uh, a mission that, you know, many uh, believe could have been handled better, uh, and many questions about whether the Taliban should or should not have been uh, in, in charge of doing some security checks. Um, you know, I think it's, it's important to ask what would have been the other option. If it wasn't the Taliban, it would have been Americans. And if you put more American troops further out, uh, you know, doing the first level of checks, you put, essentially you put them in more danger as well. Um, so I'm not sure there was a better option for the president or for uh, General McKenzie to, to pursue. Okay, when it comes to President Biden yesterday, saying that we would not forget, we would not forgive, and he says we will hunt you down and make you pay regarding yesterday's bombing. What was the reaction to that from uh, Afghanistan, from ISIS-K? Have we heard anything from the Taliban? I mean, the Taliban has also condemned this attack, um, but it's worth noting that it's very difficult to go after a group like ISIS-K. Um, this is a terrorist group that is more extreme than the Taliban in their observance of Sharia law, and their vision differs as well. They have a, a kind of, you know, domination ideology, uh, much as like ISIS in Iraq and, and Syria, where they want to take over and, and create a caliphate in the Middle East and really extend it to the West. Um, and that makes them incredibly dangerous. And they know how to hide and, and diffuse their leadership uh, over, you know, difficult terrain in Afghanistan to find them. So I think it's going to be difficult for uh, for uh, the for U.S. military forces to strike back. And you have to remember, as troops leave Afghanistan, that reduces America's ability to collect intelligence and find ISIS-K. So, you know, those were strong words. Um, you know, can they be carried out? Uh, I'm not so sure. All right. Jordana, thank you so much for your perspective this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jennifer. Have a great weekend. That's ABC's Jordana Miller. Let's just hope and hope and hope that they can get more of those planes out of there. And uh, she's right. The, uh, can you imagine that desperation that you have to feel? to know that you're putting you, yourself and your family right back into a zone that was bombed yesterday, if you're going to Abbey Gate, to get on one of those military evacuation planes. Ugh. All right, let's get back to some of the stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. Restaurants in L.A. are looking to local officials to take the pressure off enforcing indoor COVID-19 vaccine rules. A survey of 200 businesses by the Independent Hospitality Coalition found restaurants are looking for COVID policy leadership. Adam Englander with the coalition says its members are having a hard time filling jobs and they still don't have a universal system from the city or county to check vaccine status. And going and trying to penalize small businesses when there's no consistent way to know if somebody has been vaccinated or taken the test would make it even more difficult. The group says even signs and posters from local government would reduce conflicts with customers. Brian Berman, KFI News. A church in Sun Valley that repeatedly violated COVID-19 restrictions may get a $400,000 payout from L.A. County. A potential settlement calls for the state to give Grace Church an additional $400,000 to settle the church's lawsuit. The suit claimed the COVID-19 rules violated the church's constitutional right to religious freedom. L.A. County already has spent almost a million dollars on the legal battle with the church.
A judge has approved her quest to reduce rape charges in a high-profile case, but a doctor from Newport Beach and his girlfriend still face a life sentence. Grant Robichaux and Sarissa Riley now face charges involving two of the original 13 accusers. Lawyer Mike Fell says prosecutors included charges for his client once the phone was finally analyzed. There was definitely evidence on that on my client's phone, which uh, which prompted the attorney general's office to say we want to go forward with the charges as it involved her. The judge says his decision to reduce charges has nothing to do with politics, which were attached to the case during the 2019, uh, 2018 election for Orange County DA. Well, the jail in New York, where Jeffrey Epstein hanged himself in 2019, is closing, at least temporarily, to deal with a bunch of issues. The Justice Department says some of the problems at the jail include poor security and deteriorating infrastructure. The jail is expected to close as soon as next month. It currently holds more than 200 inmates. Southern states are getting ready to be hit by Tropical Storm Ida. ABC's Rob Marciano says Ida is expected to become a hurricane over the next few days as it moves through the Gulf of Mexico. Tropical storm warnings are posted for western Cuba. It will rapidly intensify over very warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico and rapidly move to the coast, potentially making landfall as the Category 2 or 3 storm on the Louisiana coast Sunday afternoon. The governor of Louisiana has already declared a state of emergency in anticipation of the storm, and the National Hurricane Center is tracking tropical storm Nora, which is said to hit Mexico's Pacific coast this weekend. It says Nora is likely to reach hurricane force by tomorrow and brush the coast near Puerto Vallarta. The center says it could then move up the Baja California Peninsula by Monday. Nora is expected to cause flash flooding and mudslides. And why not end... On a murder hornet update, shall we? Officials in Washington state have destroyed the first nest of Asian giant hornets. The nest of so-called murder hornets was found near Seattle. Entomologists at Washington state, one named Sven Spieschiger, 